Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares. And it's Friday. Just the day for our Friday Night Fright. Now this is the segment that the Horror Freak 85 came up with. Where we do a different horror movie based on a certain theme. This week's theme is Gone But Not Forgotten. The movie I was actually thinking about doing was Monkey Shines. To kind of finish what I started last week, kind of a tribute to George A. Romero, who I thought was an incredible director. But the reason why I didn't is because I have plans for that movie. I'm not going to say what they are yet, but you'll be seeing it in an upcoming video. Instead, I decided to take on the Hammer film To the Devil, a Daughter. Now, this has a plethora of people who are no longer with us. <laughs> so, um, let's start with the normals. To the Devil, a Daughter is a 1976 film which runs 95 minutes and is directed by Peter Sykes. Peter Sykes unfortunately passed away on March the 1st of 2006 at the age of 66. That's a lot of sixes. Now he was it he was responsible for The House in Nightmare Park and Demons of the Mind. Now this stars Richard Widmark as John Verney. Now he passed away on March the 24th of 2008 at the age of 93. He was in the movie The Swarm and the semi-horror slash disaster film, I guess if you want to call it that, thriller maybe, Roller Coaster. This also stars Christopher Lee as Father Michael Rayner. Now, Christopher Lee unfortunately passed away on June the 7th of 2015 at the age of 93. Uh, you name it, he was basically in it as far as Hammer's concerned. He was in The Mummy, of course. Horror Castle. And The City of the Dead. Which is actually a quite quite a good film. There is very little that I don't like Christopher Lee in. From the early Star Wars trilogy to the Lord of the Rings, he was a fantastic actor. R.I.P. Christopher Lee. Now this also stars Honor Blackman as Anna Fountain. Now, if that name sounds familiar, you're probably a James Bond fan. Now, she was in Cockneys vs. Zombies, which is such a great zom zombie comedy or zomcom. And she was in my second favorite James Bond movie of all time as the leading lady, Pussy Galore, in Goldfinger. She's awesome. This also stars Denholm Elliott as Henry Beddoes. Unfortunately, he passed away on October the 6th, 1992, at the age of 70. The movie I most associate with him, or actually movies I most associate him with, is Trading Spaces, where he played the butler. Indiana Jones, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and The Last Crusade. And, of course, The Hound of the Baskervilles. And finally, Natasha Kinski as Catherine Beddoes. Uh, she played an interesting part in the Hotel New Hampshire, to where she wore a costume. Not going to say which. <laughs> and she was in the remake of Cat People. Now, here's my thing about Natasha Kinski. She is a gorgeous woman. There is no doubt about that. I mean, she is just beautiful. But for some reason, her acting 
just gets under my skin. I don't know what it is. It just, just drives me insane. I honestly think that the only reason why she did as well as she did is because she was so pretty. But that's just my opinion. Now, a brief synopsis on this. Um, I can't really say too much without giving the entire movie away, so I'll just, um, I'll just say this. Of course, Christopher Lee plays Father Michael Rayner, and Natasha Kinski plays a nun. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say, because there is a lot to this movie, and if I say anything else... It's going to spoil some of the rest of the movie. It's kind of odd. You need to see it in order to understand. Now, some interesting things about the film. Uh, this was Christopher Lee's final Hammer film until The Resident in 2011. Uh, Richard Widmark had to be talked out of quitting after problems with production. Olivia Newton-John from Greece, and also from having a recording history, of course, was an original candidate for Natasha Kinski's part of Catherine Beddoes. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, this last fact I found incredibly interesting, but it really creeped me out. i do not not sure how you guys are going to feel about this, but it uh, bothers me now. Bothered me then, bothers me now. Uh, the movie was released 40 days after Natasha Kinski's 15th birthday. Now, she claims she was pressured to do the nude scene at the end, where she is nude, like completely nude. Which I was almost ashamed of myself for even watching. But of course, I didn't know this at the time. But, um, I don't know, it just bothers me. That would have made her 14 when this movie was filmed. That just creeps me out. I don't know. And, of course, Christopher Lee had a, I guess it's called a famous nude scene. I've never really heard of it, but um, his scene was actually not done by him, but by his stunt double. So it's not frontal nudity, it's basically back nudity, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, this is a really good movie. It's a slow burn, um, if that's your sort of thing. I'm not sure if the facts that I've given you would have put you off to this film. If not, I mean, if that's the case, I completely understand. I didn't know going into the film. I've never been a Natasha Kinski fan, but I don't agree with what happened to her. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to get up on my soapbox or whatever, but it just, eh, ugh, yeah. Anyway, I like I said, I enjoyed the film for the most part. It is a interesting Hammer film. It's one of the, if I remember correctly from what I saw, it's one of the last Hammer films before they closed down. And um, it's definitely worth a watch if you're into satanic movies and stuff like that. I like movies with Satanism in them. Um, I'm not a Satanist, but... <laughs> it's just a subject that is always um, kind of scared me. So whenever I hear a movie has that sort of theme, I tend to gravitate towards it. So, yeah. Anyway, have you seen this movie? What did you think? Definitely comment below and let me know. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time. Peace.